Thank you. Um, I also want to start by thanking you for organizing this and thanking all the uh, people who have taken you know, time out to listen and watch this presentation. It's very encouraging to see that people are taking their healthcare very seriously. Um, as you said, my name is um, Dr. Ajaba. I'm a breast imaging and interventional radiologist at uh, Bay State. All right, so today the topic is um, recalls in uh, mammography. And uh, pretty much what I want you to get out of uh, this brief talk is the importance of breast cancer screening for women, um, when to start uh, breast cancer screening, and if you're called back, you know, to answer questions about what does it mean, and obviously um, to take some of the anxiety away if that happens. First of all, I'll talk about the importance of screening. Um, so breast cancer is diagnosed um, about 13 in 13% of women in their lifetime. That's a really high percentage. This is the most common cancer in women. So it's very important that we take this very seriously. You know, Fortunately, um, a lot of extensive research has been done and um, which shows that mammography significantly reduces the mortality, and that is the death rate from cancer, and also the morbidity. And what do I mean by morbidity? I, I mean that um, the effects of having breast cancer, the surgery, how much surgery you will have, and all the uh, treatment that could be really difficult. Um, breast cancer screening not only helps to find it, it also helps to find it early so that the effects of treatment are much, much less. And I wanna emphasize that in breast cancer survival, early diagnosis is the key. You wanna catch it early. Um, and when you do, you have a good chance with all the technology out there. Um, observational studies have shown that women over the age of 40 really benefit from having uh, breast cancer screening. And this is optimal when you do it routinely every year. Um, the um, ACR, which is the um, Association of uh, Radiologists, recommend that women start screening at the age of 40 and uh, have their mammograms every year. And this is for women with average risk. If you have high risk family history, um, discuss with your doctor about the possibility of early screening. That's something you should discuss. And um, if you're one of the tiny women that hit that uh, small demographic that need early screening, then there's a whole uh, schedule for you that is beneficial for patients in that, uh, people in that group. So when you get your screening mammogram, which is the main tool for um, catching cancers as early as possible, or even sometimes we catch lesions many times that are not even cancer yet. They're in the group we call pre-cancer, um, in which the cells are not typical. And um, that's even better. Um, we're catching it before it becomes even called a cancer, or even many patients who we catch as so-called cancer do very well. So what when you do this screening mammogram, um, I will put into two buckets the results you get. What you really wanna know, um, if it's called benign or negative, it really means the same thing. It means that nothing that you have to do anything about was seen, and then we just say you should continue your annual screening. The other group from a screening mammogram um, are the um, people that are recalled for additional workup. And this is the main, this is what this uh, topic is really about. The first thing when you get that letter that says um, you are called back, I know life is scary. I know we don't always, we don't wanna see any problem or potential problem, but I would really advise you to try not to freak out. I will, I will emphasize this multiple times uh, that most callbacks are benign or negative. 
we we are just making sure we just see an area that needs to be assessed more to make sure. Um, and the next thing you should do after trying not to freak out is to schedule your additional workup um, as soon as possible. Um, callback anxiety is a thing, um, just by, like anxiety to many things. Um, um, that cannot be prevented for some people, especially it can be um, um, very troubling. Hopefully when you schedule your appointment, um, uh, you know, and get it in a timely fashion, you can get it over with and put it behind you. First of all, I want to say that feeling a little anxiety with callback is normal. A lot of women go through that. And um, as I said again, and I will repeat many times, um, the changes that we're seeing or what we're seeing on the mammogram um, are most of the time not cancer, okay? Or so they are a finding that is not life-threatening. If you uh, have anxiety and your callback appointment is um, a few days off, um, it could be helpful to talk to people. You can talk to loved ones. Um, don't keep it all bottled up inside. Um, you can talk to your provider uh, or a counselor. Your provider is a good bet because they will kind of tell you about um, what you expect and probably say what I've just uh, been repeating several times. Um, talking to other people, especially your provider or counselor or you know, someone who you know who has gone through the process. A lot of people have gone through the process of being called back. Um, as a last, as a last resort, um, the American Cancer Society does have a phone line, um, which I mean, you can Google, and um, it's they, there's always somebody to give you some support. But hopefully, you get an appointment sooner than later. So the next um, answer, the next thing that I'll be discussing is why were you called back? Um, there are different reasons, but um, I pulled up, I've written here the main reasons why you're called back. Sometimes it's technical reasons, you know, the pictures weren't clear. I mean, we know that a lot of people, um, mammography entails you've been pulled in and compressed. Sometimes um, we as radiologists, we assess the picture. Is this picture adequate? Does this include the whole breast tissue? We are trying to rule out cancer. We want you to move on for the rest of the year and be confident that there is nothing there. So we look and make sure that the study is adequate and that the study is diagnostic. That means that it's good enough to rule out any finding. Sometimes we just see an area that looks different from uh, your uh, past mammograms um, because we look very carefully and compare with prior mammograms and we're looking for subtle changes. And if we see this, uh, we call you back just to make sure. And this, this may be that the breast wasn't compressed as much as the last time or it was positioned a little differently. So when you come back, we'll just do some uh, extra images to resolve this. And then also there are some times when there's a real finding um, that could potentially be suspicious. Uh, it could be specks of calcium, which is a mineral that we have in our bones and teeth, which is one of the things we look for that are increasing to show us a sign of um, if there's a possibility of really early cancer. But if calcifications are mostly benign, but we call you back to, to really look at those, to magnify those calcifications and decide what to do with them. Or it might be a mass. And most masses even are benign. Some people, feel, some people hear the word mass and think it's scary. On a mammogram, a cyst, is described as a mass, and a cyst does not really mean anything. And even if it's described as a solid mass, there are tons of benign solid masses. All right, so what do you expect on the day of your callback, okay? So on the day of your callback, you, um, you have done your screening mammogram. Most of the time, not all of the time, we do repeat a mammogram. And this now we call a diagnostic mammogram. And this mammogram is just to, uh, to really um, address the particular um, issue that we had with the prior mammogram. This could be 
to compress that area out to see it better. Um, it could be to magnify that area to see it better. And then we carefully evaluate um, the study. While you do this, why, when you come for this callback, when the, um, unlike in your screening, when the technologist takes the image, she will show the radiologist. The radiologist will evaluate it and see what else needs to be done because um, the radiologist wants to resolve everything before you go. Um, sometimes you will have an additional ultrasound, uh, sometimes a mammogram, and then that's all. And sometimes you go straight to ultrasound, depending on what it looks like. Uh, ultrasound, unlike mammography that uses x-rays, it uses sound waves and there isn't the compression, so it's um, better tolerated. And um, the ultrasound will further evaluate the, the lesion seen on mammography. Sometimes we also want to look at ultrasound to confirm that there's nothing there or we see a lesion and then with ultrasound, we can determine if it's a cyst or if it's solid or what to do with it. Um, after all the images have been evaluated, um, you most of the time will be um, given the results of your test before you go home, which um, that is really good because you've been holding all that uh, unknown before coming there. And then what um, are the, okay, just before I talk about the results, um, as many of you know, uh, I don't know if we have some people who haven't started mammograms. As I said, mammography, you use an X-ray to uh, go through tissue and get pictures. And with ultrasound, you use sound waves to look at. Um, those are the two main modalities. Uh, we do have some other modalities, but that's what it entails most of the time. So what's the outcome of this callback workup when we've gotten all this? Um, it's either we find out that the area that was suspicious, um, we call it suspicious because that's just how we um, uh, we call we we that particular area. That's how we describe it. The area of concern, I'll say. Um, most of the time, it turns out to be nothing. Um, there's nothing to to worry about, and then you return back to your scheduled screening. The other thing that can happen is that it's probably nothing, but we are so set on catching cancer as early as possible. So we don't mean to scare you, but our main focus is to get that cancer before it becomes a problem. Um, and so there are some times when we're like, this looks like nothing, um, but it doesn't go away altogether. It's probably changes, our body changes, our tissue changes, and we we'll want to watch that area carefully. Usually it's a two year span and we have you come every six months and we're checking for subtle changes um, and to make sure that area is stable. If this is the results you get, do not be freaked out. Um, as I said, most of this um, 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 follow-ups are benign very real, very little chance of cancer. If we suspect there's cancer in the breast, we do a biopsy. We don't start following things because that is um, all we're there for, um, to try and, as I said, catch cancers as quick as possible. And we take that very seriously. Very rarely, you need more than an ultrasound and a mammogram. Um, and many times that's because you have a, um, maybe an additional finding, and um, we just want to make sure. And that's usually an MRI um, that is done extremely rarely. Most patients will come and will resolve whatever question with a mammogram and an ultrasound. So um, the other group is that we, we don't say that we don't see nothing to say that you should and advise you to go back to routine annual screening. Um, it doesn't look like it's most likely nothing, and but we just want to follow it. We actually see a finding and we um, want to pursue that. We want to make sure that whatever finding is benign. And the next step will be to have a breast biopsy. 
most breast biopsies are benign. We err on the side of caution a lot. And we don't mean to scare people, but we just believe that as as um, the, the advantage of catching cancers very early, where they're not a problem, where you have a small surgery, put it behind you and go back to screening, is so important that um, we, if we, if something, if we have a finding that persists, um, and uh, it's not clearly looking like nothing, we go ahead and biopsy it. And what does a biopsy mean? A biopsy means that you will come back, and as radiologists, we do image guided biopsies. What that means is that we use imaging, either mammography or ultrasound or MRI, to guide us to the area to biopsy and we take tiny little strips of tissue. We're not taking out the lesion. We are just finding out what it is. So we take tiny little strips of tissue, send it to the pathologist. The, patho and the pathologist will make slides, look under a mi microscope, look at the cells, and let us know that this is a benign finding, and then you're done with that. Or rarely they can say, this is not cancer, but the cells here are not normal. And many times we just go and take those uh, those cells out. We don't want to leave them in the breast. And uh, even more rarely, it is actually uh, um, a malignancy. And then we send you for surgery uh, to have that area taken out, the lesion taken out. Um, so this anxiety that you get from recall, I mean, we get anxiety from every medical test that is impacting. But in the grand scheme of things, the anxiety that you get from a recall or being told you have a biopsy, uh, compared to the significant reduction in breast cancer deaths from screening and early diagnosis, I think it's better to have uh, us really evaluate your breast and make sure everything is okay. The anxiety that you feel that um, patients feel from uh, being recalled and being told there were biopsy, um, although it's not enjoyable, it does resolve uh, after you get your results. I have uh, patients really, really happy um, and doesn't you don't have any lasting side effect from that. So this is just a diagram to show you how rare that is. Um, about 10% of patients would be recalled and the patients that eventually get to have a biopsy um, is rare. For you, you it will be a 1.2% chance uh, that you end up um, getting a, a biopsy. And another 2% uh, uh, chance that you will be followed, which is, which is um, it's inconvenient to come for six months for two years. But as I said, in the grand scheme of things, you should think about the fact that um, we are trying to um, catch something really early. And if it's caught very early, the impact is, um, is, is very, very uh, important for, for you. All right, so in summary, um, remember that mammography saves lives and this hinges on early diagnosis. And based on extensive research, screening mammograms uh, from the age of 40 in women with average risk, as I said, if you have um, elevated risk, which should really be family history, a strong family history, especially premenopausal, you should talk to your doctor about uh, starting before the age of 40. Um, anxiety um, when you're recalled or you're told you need a biopsy is normal and has no lasting side effect. Ask, ask for support or talk to someone if you find it overwhelming. It's important that you schedule your recall appointment as soon as possible. It's better to be safe. Most recalls and biopsies are benign. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And now if you have questions, I will be glad to answer. Thank you, Dr. Ejiba. That was great. I really liked what you said about the anxiety and callback and, you know, 
erring on the side of caution. I think, you know, you know, you're so right. And there is a lot of anxiety in all of our medical appointments yes. generally, right? You know, yes. the whole white coat syndrome and everything. It's all, it'll always be there. It happens <laughs> to everybody. So don't, um, right. don't feel, yes, it's a normal reaction to, to getting news like that. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, you can drop down your presentation and I will uh, go with there are some questions in the queue. Uh, the first one is, uh, why are some suspicious lumps biopsied and some watch? Uh, uh, so the question, why are some suspicious lumps biopsied and some watched? Okay, so it depends on what it looks like. Uh, when we watch, we have a threshold. Uh, when um, when something is being watched, there's a less than 2% chance that it's cancer. And as I said, this is a finding that um, maybe you see an area that looks, you know, a little denser than the rest of the mammogram or looks different. And then you, you compress it out and it compresses presses out, it looks like tissue, but it doesn't completely go away. Or you have, or there are types of calcifications that happen when you have trauma to the breast um, and, and, um, and other, and some people have calcifications when they age. There are some medical conditions that cause calcifications, but we just want to watch those calcifications, make sure they behave and continue on the track that they're supposed to be going on, um, we watch them. So our threshold is really, even though we know that this is most likely benign, um, because of the fact that we really, really want to catch something super duper early, um, we watch it. Um, when we biopsy, um, it's when we, when it's a real lesion. And most real lesions are benign. Uh, but it's a real finding. Um, it could be there are tons of masses that are benign that actually grow in the breast. Um, but as I, it's a real finding, and we want to confirm that this is benign. So we go ahead and sample it. That's a good question. Excellent. Yeah, I think it's great that for the callback too, you have the radiologist working with the technician too. Oh, yes. I mean, that's, that's it's, it's a It's a problem solving uh, uh, test. And you've, you've been carrying all that anxiety. You really need to give them an answer before you walk out of that place. And so. Yeah, yeah no, that's great. You get that. Uh, the next question is this uh, person has a family member that found a lump when she was 38. And she's wondering why, if breast cancer is on the rise, why guidelines uh, for screening uh, for the age hasn't changed, you know, probably obviously lower than 40. Um, so the choosing the age of 40 is based on research and when it is beneficial for the patient to start screening. And that's also risking the uh, benefits and the additional images that uh, come with mammography oh. sometimes. And that cutoff at which time, the truth is that the risk of breast cancer increases with age, but the impact of breast cancer is more when you're younger because you have more life to live. Um, we do take our older patients very seriously. We, we're looking for cancer in everybody, but we do acknowledge the fact that um, uh, with a younger person who who probably has kids and all and and that, so forty is the is the cutoff based on research where you really begin to benefit from uh, having annual screening mammograms. And as I said, there are a lot of patients who are uh, screened before that. Um, if you have a, a risk and your risk stratified, we have patients who start screening from the age of 22 uh, based on um, their genes and, and very strong family history. Uh, but if you're not in that high-risk group, um, we have different cutoffs. There are calculations that happen. It's a scientific process. 
If you are not in that uh, group, then the age of 40 is fine. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, next question. How long does it typically take to get results of an initial mammogram? Um, so that is dependent on the site where it is performed. So I'll be talking about BASTE. And um, at BASTE, your screening mammogram is read the same day when it's done or the next day. We really, wow. yes. Yes. We get uh, screen. We read our screening mammograms uh, very quickly. Some of the patients who um, are scanned later in the day, uh, we might read them the next morning, but um, it doesn't get to the third day. Uh, we know how anxious our patients are to get their results, so um, we get that out. I can, so I can just talk. I'm just talking about Bay State. It really depends right. on the uh, the institution where you go. Uh, the next question is, how are you notified? Do you get for all, well, if you need a recall, is it phone, email, or letter? So we send you a letter and we call you. Um, oh, okay. you yes, we really need to close the loop. And if we don't get you, we keep bugging you. So, um, we call you till we get you. We have dedicated people that that's their job to call and call until we get you. If we can't get you, we, we, we turn to your provider. Um, and so we don't, we don't we, we get everybody. I accept if someone who says, uh, I don't wanna do this for some reason, but I haven't heard of a, heard of a patient. Plus you're sent a certified letter, but um, we do make sure that you have the information and you understand what the information means. Excellent. Uh, the next question, how quickly is a callback appointment usually scheduled? And then uh, what percent of mammograms or mammos get callbacks? 10%. 10%. That's the average. Uh, the average. And I'm really talking uh, about the average um, based on research that um, roughly 10% of uh, patients are called back. So it's not an uncommon thing, um, but because that is, every time you do a mammogram, there's a 10% chance. So it's not that, you know, through, for throughout your, it's each time you do the mammogram, there's a 10% chance. So um, in the course of your life, um, there is a chance that that would happen. Um, and so, what was the other question? The, oh, I'm sorry. How how quick um, is the callback appointment usually scheduled? Uh, so the the callback appointments, I when you get the callback, you should get an appointment within a week. Um, mm -hmm. Patients who are extremely anxious um, and call and tell us that they're I'm really anxious, we don't take anxiety lightly, even though I said it's not, uh, there's no lasting effect, which is true. Um, but if it's really causing a woman anxiety, we try to, to speed it up. And the rare patients who we find really suspicious findings, we bring them in immediately. We Excellent. call them and bring them very quickly. If it looks um, a very, very small percentage of patients that we're a little, a little more worried about, we bring them. Um, but if not, you should get an, an appointment within a week or two to come back and do that follow-up, which is um, is fine. Two weeks is, is fine. Great. Thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, can you explain dense breast tissues and does this lead to possible cancer? Okay. All right. I will gladly do that. So um, mammography, which is the, the mainstay of breast cancer screening, um, uses um, radiation going through the breast and taking pictures. So the pictures that we're seeing, we're trying to parse out lesions within your breast tissue. The denser you are, the main effect of being dense is um, very dense breast limits mammography. So that is the main um, limiting 
factor with mammography, your breast density. I didn't really go into that because this wasn't a screening talk. Um, and that's why. Oh, we, okay. But uh, yeah, for screening mammography, um, the dense breast, and you will get a letter um, that tells you that your breast is dense. Um, we group the breast into four groups of density. Um, the two um, extremes of density are what we call dense breasts. And um, we tell you that is limited and you do have the option of adding another modality with your screening. Um, there are states where, I know there are some states where it's easier to get insurance to cover it, like Connecticut and, and New York. Um, so that's something that you should consider. The main additional modality that we do is uh, is a is an ultrasound to kind of like offset that uh, density that you have. Excellent. Thank you for answering that. Uh, the next question, how magnified are the mammograms when you look at them to determine whether or not something doesn't look benign? Um, it depends on what we're doing. It depends on if it's um, if it's a screening mammogram, it's not magnified. It's the breast tissue. And that's important. Uh, we don't magnify it because we don't want to distort what we're seeing with the screening mammogram. The screening mammogram is just to look and to find a finding. It's not really and um, it's not really to diagnose it. If there is a finding, that's what your um, callback is is. Um, four. Now, when you're called back, we do do special mammograms, and that um, one of them it's a magnification view where um, can be magnified three or four times, and that's because we're blowing up the picture to to look at it to determine if it's one of those benign calcifications like a vascular calcification or skin, cal which are all you know the normal aging process that we we will all go through. Um, we really want to magnify and look at it carefully. So that's when we're magnifying. Um, we do, uh, most people do now, our screening mammograms are done 3D, which actually has improved uh, from what we used to do uh, with screening mammograms, especially for dense breasts. This was actually done for dense breast and um, the whole research was on dense breast and we're like oh it helps with people who are not dense too so everybody should have the benefit of it and um, before we used to do mammograms your breast is a 3d structure and we used to do um, a 2d image and for a dense breast where you have all that breast density it was easy for things to hide in all that dense tissue uh, but now we're doing slices through the breast um, on both planes. So it has really improved our pickup in dense breast. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you. Well, we all benefit from those who have dense breasts then. Um, the next question, if you have double, if you've had a double mastectomy with implants, are mammograms still done? No. Okay. Yeah. If you, um, so the whole, um, well, there are different reasons why you have uh, uh, mastectomies. Um, one is cancer, one is prophylactic. I mean, the main reasons as to do with breast cancer, there could be other reasons, but uh, when it has to do with breast cancer, it's either you have a cancer there, um, or yeah, I guess there's a potential of having cancers in both breasts. It's rare, but it does happen. And so um, you could have a mastectomy based on the extent. I mean, that's really rare. Um, and so you have that. And then there are some women who are, have extremely high risk who opt to have mammograms. They're young, you know, maybe they've seen a family member go through it and they've tested and they have one of these genes that put them at a very high risk of breast cancer and they prophylactically. Uh, have mastectomies with um, uh, different types of reconstructions done. Um, that actually is uh, going down a lot now because for this high-risk patients, we're doing breast MRIs. 
and um, which is a very, very uh, sensitive study for those type of high risk cancers. And we're, we're catching those when we, we need to catch them and they can be taken care of without um, impacting the patient, uh, the person's lifespan. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Uh, next question. How long does it take to get a biopsy report? Report? Mm-hmm. So, um, the, I, as I said, again, I can only talk for base stage. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that will, that actually depends on the turnout rate of the pathology department. Um, I am not a pathologist and I really do want your slides to be read by a pathologist and not me. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be that's so it depends on the turnout rate. Uh, when you take we take the images, um, we put them in formalin and send it to pathology, they make the slides, and we tell our patients at base date three business days and they get it in three. Business. So it's, um, um, well, depending on when you do your biopsy, let me just say it's three days, three days of anxiety. <laughs> I wanted to say two, but um, depending on, let's just put it three days of being a little anxious, um, which which I don't think is too bad. Um, um, that's really good. Very rarely, if they're not that backed up, we get it in two days. But um, we tell patients three days so that they're not calling on the second day and we're we're explaining that it's not ready yet. Because I think that adds to the anxiety when you're told you were supposed to get it and they haven't called you. I'm like, and you know, many times your, your mind goes to the worst thing. Of course. Um, so, sure. so we tell patients uh, three business days because we know that we would have gotten it by then. And um, when we get it, we usually ask the patient how they want to get their results in base day. Um, since COVID happened, we do give people the options of phone call. That's one of the things with COVID. It changed things and, and it hasn't completely gone back and never will. Um, <laughs> but at this option of calling patients um, to tell them, and they tolerated, you know, the information well. Before we used to think that um, this is a a talk that we want to have with a patient one on one, sure. um, but it went well with COVID, so now we give the patient that um, option. And people have busy, busy lives. Some of them don't want to keep coming. Um, we give them a certain time, um, a window of about an hour, during which they will get that phone call. We tell you to please keep keep your phone handy. And they choose that time before they leave. So we make sure that it's convenient. And during that hour, you get a phone call to give you your results. And you also have the option of still coming in and um, or sitting down and uh, giving you the results. Um, oh, that's fine. We also will, at that time, not just give you your results, we'll tell you what you need to do, and we actually get you an appointment for a consultation for whatever you need next. So. Well, I applaud you for your work um, helping women through the, the anxiety and being speedy about results and reviewing um, the um, the mammogram at the callback and so forth. So thank you for always being available for those callbacks. Um, it looks like we're uh, at the end of our questions, if anyone else um We'll just give it another beat, but I want to thank you, Dr. Ajiba, for your time and the presentation tonight and for our audience for the great questions. And, um, oh, uh, oh, well, we have one last question. <laughs> um, the question is, how often are men screened for cancer? Men? Men, yes, are men screened for cancer? So we, only, we only screen men for cancer if they are susceptible to cancer. Um, we just said women have, well, I don't know if you remember, but I said women have a 13% chance. Uh, for men, it's 1%. And um, nobody is screened for every single thing they can have. 
Like um, there are many things that many people have a 1% chance of having. We don't go about, otherwise you just spend your whole life screening for every little thing. You, you screen for anything that can happen to your eyes, everything that can happen to your throat. So we don't do that. Um, we screen based on, you know, the percentage of people who have it. That's where med medicine is at. Maybe in the future, there'll be a way to like do it, make sure every single thing about you is checked for. And the rate of breast cancer in men is really low. There are other things they screen for. They screen their prostates and because that has a higher chance of, of um, giving them a problem. Um, we do screen men who have a high risk for breast cancer. Um, one of the gene mutations, I mean, you might have had a BRCA. Uh, they're different BRCAs, and BRCA2 does happen in men and cause breast cancer. So if there is a family that has that, that gene, if they are men, we do check, and, um, and they come for their mammograms um, because um, although breast cancer is rare in men, it actually presents later. And so if, if a man has a risk, um, we screen them, but yeah. That is, uh, that is super rare. The number of men who have genetic mutations is very, very rare. And if uh, some men, after they've had breast cancer, um, screen after, after it's treated and taken care of. Excellent. Yes, well, thank you. Know. Well, thank you for answering all the questions. Thank you to the audience. And thank you, Dr. Ajiba, for your time and expertise. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you for organizing this, and um, I, I'm really happy about the people who came to listen. It's encouraging that people are taking their health care um, seriously. Those were really good questions. <laughs>